There are many different ways to play Heavy Assault. It's one of my favourite classes and I want to go into a full guide on this class to really help you out as much as possible. First, let's talk a little bit about the ability slot. This allows you to basically tank the opponent more often. This is the core integral part of Heavy Assault. You generally speaking want to pick either Adrenaline Shield or you want to pick Nanite Mesh Generator. Resist is pretty much never worth going into, especially because of the client side nature of the game. The very marginally higher effective HP of Resist just isn't worth it relative to the downsides of which there are many. The choice between Adrenaline Shield and Nanite Mesh Generator isn't as clear cut as it used to be. Pretty much always Adrenaline Shield used to be better. These days, to be honest, sometimes I will run Nanite Mesh Generator. It depends on how many people you intend on chain killing in a row. Also, if you do lose your shields and then you don't get a kill, in my opinion, in those situations, Adrenaline Shield is put on the back foot relative to Nanite Mesh Generator, so something to consider. Commissioner with a laser sight and a one-time scope is pretty much always the best option. Maybe you want to use the silenced pistol if you're going to be playing Stalker Infiltrator, but you know, this isn't Splinter Cell, so you know, you know, we're playing heavy assaults or commissioners best. In terms of rocket launchers there's some clear winners. The decimator used to be something that everyone would use because flak wasn't meta but now that nanoweave's been removed around nine months ago flak is used a lot more and so decimator isn't as good because flak counters decimator to a degree. Decimator is still a good option it does a lot of damage and it allows you to dumb fire onto maxes and it genuinely is pretty decent. But you can also use the default rocket launchers that you get that also allow you to dumb fire but they have a lower reload speed and lower damage but it isn't as bad as it sounds especially because of the lower reload speed it's quite nice. Now the default rocket launchers also allow you to lock onto enemy aircraft which is a genuinely useful utility option which a lot of salty vets will still use and so realistically a lot of the time the default rocket launcher is genuinely a great option to go with. You do also have the annihilator which is the lock on variant that you can use against anti-air specifically or you can use like the striker if you're on TR but it's not really that needed. Now for your suit slot there's basically two options in Heavy Assault. You've got Advanced Shield Capacitor or you have Flak. Flak's really good if you think that you're going to be anywhere near grenades, anywhere near C4, anywhere near air to ground with splash damage. Flak in those specific situations can be good. Now because this is Planet Side 2, those situations to be honest will be most of the time and so I'll almost always run Flak but Advanced Shield Capacitor can make sense to use if you just don't think you're going to be going against grenades much. You know maybe you're using Avoidance or something or Sweeper Hood so you're not running into Claymores. You know I guess sometimes Advanced Shield Capacitor can be good. Technically on paper it's the best option, it's just that in practice you oftentimes be running into claymores or, or just something will happen where you're taking explosive damage. So for that reason flak generally speaking is a really good option really. Now you can also go for bandolier occasionally. Bandolier in combination with frag grenades or ideally even concussion grenades are great at specifically one thing and that is breaking point holds. If an opposition enemy is point holding, if you throw a grenade in there you know every five seconds, every seven seconds, that's going to really hamper the point hold, especially if you do it at say the 30, 40 second mark, it's genuinely a very useful tool to have as something to pull out when you need it. Now speaking of grenades there's a few different options. To be honest most of the time concussion grenades is going to be the most viable option but frag grenades are okay as well. You do have anti-vehicle grenades which you know are okay as an option if you really want them. We do also have our utility slot. Generally speaking it's agreed upon that medkit pretty much on heavy assault is always the best option. Especially again because everyone's running flak these days C4 doesn't have as much viability. As well as it was something that I would have situationally used to say that you should use unless you are really trying hard player that's going to be going against max crashes quite regularly. C4 just isn't something you really need. Med kits are pretty much always the best option. Restore kits heal you over time and truth be told are not worth it. They're okay to use on a carapace medic but you're not playing a carapace medic you're playing heavy assault. You do also have heavy specific weapons which you can use as a secondary slot if you have ASP which you get at BR100 level 100 but for now you can use these heavy weapons instead of in your secondary slot in your primary slot anytime. And those include the jackhammer which is a nice shotgun, you have the chain gun on TR which is pretty decent and the lasher which to be honest is a bit overrated and then everyone has the capability to use the thumper. The thumper's really only good in kind of like a stagnant fight where you're staring at a tunnel. I also quickly want to go over the primary weapon which you may want to use on each of the respective factions. 
I'm going to list them on screen now. These are generally considered to be the best options on each faction. You don't have to play around a bunch. Here's just the best ones. I'm also going to go ahead and list four implants, which I encourage you to go level if you think you're going to main heavy assault. This is something you want to do a bit later or as you get the implants naturally, because you generally want to unlock the weapon, get the attachments, get the suit slot, the ability slot done, or at least to a decent degree. The end stuff doesn't have as much viability because oftentimes it would cost, you know, a thousand starts for, you know, an extra two seconds on your ability shield, which might not be massively worth it. If you really want to at that point, you can start to look at implants. And again, they're going to be on the screen now. Now, of course, there's some tips for heavy assault that we should probably get into. If you want a thorium shuffle, simply look left and hold down A, then look right and hold down D. And you essentially want to sway left and right like that while switching between A and D. Generally speaking, it's a really good idea to activate your shield as quickly as possible whenever possible. If you get more advanced you might want to wait until you've lost your traditional shields to activate your overshield but that's more of a nuanced thing and sometimes it will mess you up. Next thing I quickly want to mention is headshots will do two times more damage and so headshots are always useful to do on heavy assault. I also would encourage you on heavy assault not to worry too much about your stats. Some people will think that they're way more important than they are but oftentimes they just reflect your playstyle. If you push in a bunch and you play for the objective you're obviously is going to have a far lower KD than if you play safe, you play conservative, you wait for people to push you, which of course people are going to die more if they're pushing you, they're in sprint, they don't have time to aim down sights. It's obvious that you're going to have a higher KD if you're playing conservative, but it isn't always the most fun thing to do. And so take that into consideration when you are playing heavy assault, don't feel like you have to, you know, care about your stats too much. It's something only generally speaking you will care about. Personally, I find it fun to overextend as much as possible and kind of just see what I can get away with because heavy assault does have a lot of survivability via medkit and via the overshield and so exploiting that to the maximum amount possible is something I find really fun with the class. There's also a bunch of really simple infantry tips which I would recommend. The thing is I wouldn't really want to include that in a heavy assault guide because I think they deserve their own video and so for that you may want to check my description and the playlist in my YouTube channel in order to see a series of helpful videos which might help you with Planet Side 2. Now there are a few different class loadouts that I recommend for heavy assault depending on what you're going to be doing. There's one that I'd recommend for indoors that might be things like short barrel, laser sight, suppressor. One of the, my favourite things to do is try to solo cap bases as a heavy assault player with something like avoidance and sensor shield. You can use um, sweeper HUD instead of um, avoidance if you don't have avoidance or you can just look where you're going something I generally won't do so I just use avoidance but yeah that's another way to play heavy assault another way is of course going to be zarg surfing that's what you're going to see a lot of the heavy assault clips you know there are a bunch of easy kills in a row because the players are noobs it's also tower farming to a lesser degree is the same kind of thing as zarg surfing and you see that in my videos a lot because it's easy gameplay footage for you guys to watch you may also want to consider this point holding loadout if you're going to be drawing an outfit that likes to point hold some outfits on emerald still do that and there's maybe one or two on cobalt at maximum that still do that I'm sure there's one or two on Miller as well. It's a dying thing, but if you do want a point hold, here's a loadout for it. For those that don't know, that's when you get a bunch of players to kind of hold one room. You don't leave that room, nobody overextends, and you see how long you can hold it before the opposition kills you. Or ideally, you capture the base. Right, so hopefully this is a great 2023 loadout guide for you for Planetside 2. But this is a video series which I think should be useful for you. So in that regard, I do recommend you check the playlist because again, that will be more useful than just watching this video solo. Playing well as an infantry player isn't just about your class or your loadout. It's also about making sure you have a good frame rate, that you have a good aim, and also that you adopt a series of infantry skill things that are unique to this game that many other games don't oftentimes use. If you are liking this type of video, I do encourage you to subscribe to the channel because it helps so much to subscribe, you have no idea, and I appreciate it if you would like the video as well. I also encourage you to become a member, and usually that costs 5 quid, it's super appreciated if you do do that. If you've got anything you would like to add to this type of video, leave that in the comments. It's been a pleasure, hope you all have a wonderful week. I'm out, GG, bye bye.